Uh, what is the significance of this year of jazz bass? Okay, this is a 77, stock 77 jazz bass, uh, with the exception of the Badass Bridge, right. which uh, has become almost a standard issue on, on this year bass, or you know, years around here, 70, 76, 77, um, into present. Um, significance, is that what we, is that what you asked the significance? Yeah, what's the, the, what's the significance of this instrument? Well, it's, it's an ash body and a maple neck. Um, and being uh, a 1977 jazz bass, it also has the pickup which was pulled back towards the bridge a little more. That started to happen around 73. Right. <clears throat> this bass also has larger frets than my 60s basses. Uh, that was the uh, that was normal in these basses from I want to say 68, 69. You started with sli a slightly larger fret size. Um, the, the larger fret along with the ash body, and this is a heavy ash body, right. and maple neck uh, contributed a lot, and, and oh, of course the pickup position too, contributed to a different sound, very much different than the 60s jazz basses, and even very much different than the, I mean the early 60s, but also different from the later 60s jazz basses, which started to change already from 66 on. So. Um, the importance of this bass in my reference collection is that it, it represents a sound um, that we're all familiar with now. Um, most people would regard this as the slap bass. This is the right. right. This is the Fender Jazz bass that everybody loves the slap sound of, and that is mostly because of the uh, pickup. In my opinion, again, so people can argue with this, and I don't care. It's okay. You know, everybody has their reasons. The the pickup position, when you pull, when you when you move pickups further apart, just like microphones, you move them farther apart, and you create more of a smiley curve in, in the sound. It's, right. it's a mid-range dip. It's uh, it's it's also referred to as a comb filter effect. Um, that the the weight of the body, the material it's made of being ash, the maple neck to some degree. I mean, the maple fingerboards. They're all maple necks, but the maple fingerboard to some degree, and the larger frets to a degree. Um, don't forget that in the 70s they also made the necks a little heavier, a little thicker, also con contributes to the sound. Um, the, the badass bridge, again, that's another another part of the, the formula of this bass. This particular one, this is a 77 with a perfect neck on it, solid and straight, which was somewhat rare uh, back then. There was a lot of them that were all over the place. This is a the reason it's in the collection is because it's a great example of it, and I refer to it for this kind of sound, for this kind of a setup. Now, with the Ash Maple Bass, um, why do you think they went through this combination of woods back when they did? Well, Fender always used Ash. Mm -hmm. um, back in the 50s, Ash was prevalent. They were using ash um, for their guitars and basses. Uh, somewhere along the line, they started using older. Um, one of the things I read about, and it makes sense, is that older is an easier uh, wood to finish. Ash takes more grain filling, so a lot of it was it, it, it was a matter of convenience for Fender. It was, sometimes it was a, a price consideration or it was a labor consideration. You know, what's easier to work with? What can we get for a better price? Um, Ash and old are both common American woods that are accessible still to this day, right. and um, that was that was their their idea. You know that was that was their reason for for using it. But you'll see instruments from the 50s that are ash, and then moving into the late 50s into the early 60s, you see that transition to older and then back and forth. And I, in all the Fender instruments that I've owned in my life, I've never experienced this, but I understand there were also a few mahogany pieces out there. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, in, in example, uh, Pino Palladino's P bass. That thing's well documented now that underneath that red finish was a mahogany body. I, yeah, I might be wrong, but I don't think I remember that. Um, there's also some talk about some of them being um, basswood. You know, even back then, but not very not very uh, popular it didn't happen a lot right. you know basswood poplar there was a lot of things but the common woods again the fender used were ash and older 
um, swamp ash being the lighter ash, and uh, this is American <coughs> Northern ash, heavy, heavy, very dense. Okay, you keep referring to the weight of the instrument. Mm -hmm. Now, in your estimation, or, or if you even know exactly, what's, what's the weight of this bass? And why is that a factor in uh, why it's so? Well, th this bass, I wish I was good at this. <laughs> but I, I would say that this bass is approaching 11 pounds. Um, it's heavy. Um, as basses get heavier and heavier, uh, there's less of the body re resonance and it's preserving more of what's coming off the string. Um, the, the, the body's just stiffening up, it's just it's not moving. And it's allowing the string, more of the string sound to come directly through. When it reaches a certain weight level, I believe that it just starts to compress. And there is less of a, less of a dynamic response in the instrument, say. Um, so there, that contributes to this having a very great natural slap sound, but perhaps not as much of the, the woody sound, the dig-in kind of thing that you get from the earlier basses that had the older bodies, or, or even ash bodies that are a little lighter. You know, less of the wood, you know, resonance. Right, okay. You know, as the wood, you know, when you, when you pluck a string, not to get too technical here, but when you really dig into a string and you pluck it, the body moves a little bit, it gives. And you feel that give, like you do in an acoustic instrument, like an acoustic guitar or an upright bass. 